When it comes to dropping a 30 plus kill game or honestly just dropping higher kill games in general, the biggest area that you struggle besides execution is knowing how to consistently find people. So today we're going to be breaking down a 36 kill solo trio win that I had really focusing on my pacing throughout. Now starting off, we're going to go ahead and land in here, grab bounty contract just like I try to do. I mean, I land in this area. If there's a bounty contract, I'm always going to go for it. Try to get that cash flow going, which point I can get loadout down and start to pick up my pace from there. But I want to start off with something that is very simple. It's very obvious, but I have to say it. Look, at the end of the day, the only difference between a 20 kill game and a 30 kill game is finding 10 more enemies. The only difference between a 10 kill game and a 20 kill game, finding 10 more enemies. The execution stays the exact same. And this is kind of where we start off, which is I'm going to hear one of the alarms go off. When you break glass in certain windows and stuff, that alarm goes off. I'm going to hear that to my right side. So what does that tell me? It tells me there's another team here. So you're going to see me play this a little bit cautious try to you know i'm aware that they are over there i only have this chimera i don't have an ar or anything at the moment i think i have a chimera and i don't know what my secondary is the striker maybe so i'm just gonna work my way over here slow down a little bit play a little bit of positioning try to see what i can find you know that door's open is anybody low trying to look up top maybe they're peeking on the rooftops i don't see anything so i'm gonna go try to get load out here little bit aggressive now in this moment when you go to get load out the only thing that you should care about is getting loadout down. If you die and get loadout down, that's a win, right? Because at the end of the day, that allows us to be able to get our loadout guns and stuff like that. But if we die and we don't get loadout down, that's like worst case scenario. Let's go ahead. We're going to get loadout down. I re-challenge, and now we're going to go ahead and work in here and be patient. Before we really get into this breakdown, right now, there's a way that you can earn money simply by playing Warzone. Repeat.gg is a tournament platform that puts on free entry Warzone tournaments, giving away $20,000 in prizes every month. All you have to do is connect your Activision or Steam account on Repeat.gg. You don't have to install any software or anything. Then enter in a free tournament and simply play Warzone just like you normally do. From there, you can play an endless amount of matches and it only uses your best game for scoring. Tournaments last anywhere from one day to one month. You can enter into multiple tournaments at a time and they pay out the top 30 to 40%, not just the winner. Right now, they are running two month long tournaments, one resurgence and one battle royale, giving away $1,500 each. Check the link in the pinned comment to get started today. I mean, what do you have to lose? You're gonna be playing Warzone anyway. Now, one of the first things that I'll tell you is weapon pings, guys, and understanding when you are in a third party situation. Right here, as I go to get this kill here, I'm gonna use the Semtex to my advantage. Make sure you're grabbing lethals and tacticals. Notice that people are shooting over to my left side. They're not shooting at me. So I'm in between two teams here. By the way, if you've never dropped a 30 kill game before, make sure you are subscribed down below because that's my whole goal is just to help you drop higher kill games. Now, right here, we're just gonna keep playing patient. Have to keep playing patient because I can't put myself in a situation where I'm in between potentially four to five enemies here. So I'm just gonna slow down. And when we slow down, what you're going to see is this guy has no idea that I'm in this spot, right? He has no reason to know that I'm here. From there, we get two pings. Okay, after a kill, guys, three things you always ask yourself. How many enemies are alive? Where are they in relation to you and where are they moving to? How many enemies are alive? Two. Where are they in relation to me? Well, one is above me and one is nowhere near me. So I don't have to worry about this guy. I only have to worry about this one. Where is he moving to? Watch which way he's moving to, right? Notice he's pushing over to my rooftop here. So I'm just going to work down low. I'm going to finally grab loadout. And by the way, we've got the pull him yacht here and we've got the HRM9. I don't think we've added the HRM9 yet to ggs.ai, which if you're not familiar with that... Uh, me, T Captain X, and uh, Gertis Averse built an AI algorithm that allows you to find the best weapons based on your playstyle. It's got a meta score and everything, balanced, casual, tactical, aggressive players. You can find the best gun for your playstyle. So, right here, we're going to go ahead and just clear down low, right? Where I'm not assuming that he's gone. I know that he's here somewhere. I'm just not 100% sure where, and I'm not going to play this too over aggressive. Enemy AO. dropping into the AO, so make sure you're listening to that dialogue and understanding that his teammates are now flying back in. We get the down, we get the thirst. Now, there's two pings. One of these guys is right below me, but I can't see him because my cursor is covering it. So I'm going to drop down low, and now we finesse. One of the biggest things with GG's.ai, guys, is the ability to log your games and start to understand like patterns of where you're struggling and how you're having success. One big thing that I noticed, a lot of people are using stims or choosing stims. I don't think a lot of you guys are actually using them, though. Right here, so I'm going to get shot 
shot by this enemy. I specifically remember this moment. Now, I hear another enemy kind of like right over by the buy station. He's kind of to my back right corner. So I'm going to preemptively stim. That is the only way that I get out of this situation because it gives me the health boost, at which point I break the line of sight. It gives me the speed boost to get around this corner right here. And now I can push back inside. Now the line of sight is broken. I can go ahead and replay and we slow this thing down again right? We got to slow this thing down. Hope that they get a little bit over aggressive here. I know it's at least two enemies, potentially three, because I am in trios. That third teammate could fly back. And notice that you see the gun switch right there. Little things like this, right? So I hear a little bit down below, but look at the gun flip. You can see him swap out the pistol. There's the pistol right there. He grabbed the gun. Boom. Tagged. Now we're just going to work our way around here, play a little bit of positioning. Play a little bit of positioning right here. I can easily escape if I need to. Watch me easily escape down thirsted there's my escape route right line of sight is broken here they can't do anything they can't actually shoot me so now we're going to go ahead replay like i said they can't shoot me or anything also how many enemies are alive where are they in relation to you where are they moving to watch this one right here watch this second dot on the back side outside of the building he's pushing into the next building so what does that mean it means he's probably going to try to push the rooftop here and pinch me right he's going to try to push up challenge me from up top at which point i'm stuck between the two and there's nothing that i can do sure enough there he is we beat him up top drop down we are literally a bullet but we're able to get that kill and i do need to worry about that next teammate jump across here get the thirst and by the way i know that it's only one left at this point because i took out the black noir skin on my level we're gonna go in and challenge and i make a mistake here i just stopped shooting i thought i'd gotten that down and i didn't unfortunate one of the biggest things and i would say this in a 30 kill game you can probably die two or three times as long as you quickly regain so what we're going to see here is i have five kills in the first notice where i land here so i land at a minute and 39 seconds i'm going to go ahead and push this forward we're at a minute 31 we're at a minute 22 we're at a minute 14 we're at a minute seven and now right here i'm going to go ahead and grab loadout i'm going to grab a portable radar right here for information so I can get my momentum back and notice at 50 seconds here. So it took me 50 seconds to regain, get loadout down, get some information with a portable radar. And now we're going to go ahead and keep pushing. Other thing I will say, if you are subscribed, I talk about pacing all the time, right? Pacing of a 20 kill game is four, four, six, six. So four kills in the first, four kills in the second, six kills in the third, six kills in end game. There's not really as cookie cutter, by the way, notice one enemy above here. And I want to break down what exactly my thought process is, but there's no cookie cutter way to drop a 30. Biggest thing is getting seven to eight kills in that first circle and going into end game was somewhere between like 18 to 20. Now, I noticed multiple enemies here, two enemies above me, but watch how this progresses, right? Every one to two seconds, a portable radar pings, every three seconds, a UAV ping. So make sure we're checking that to understand where they're moving to. Notice there's three now, still two above on the building to my right side. Still three enemies, two above on the building to my right side. Oh, it just flipped three enemies. This guy jumped to load out and this guy is now on my level. So now all of a sudden I'm going to push over here because I know exactly what they're going to do. They're going to try to grab load out and rotate right back to the building that they came from. Most likely they could push to graveyard, but most people are going to grab load out and go right back because it's comfortable. Now I catch this enemy across around the corner. We get the down. Sure enough. What do you notice? Two enemies on load out. So I'm going to challenge this, but I'm not going to over challenge it. Not going to over challenge it. I don't get good shots on that guy. I'm going to lose that gunfight. So I back off. Now in this moment, I'm expecting them to pinch me. Okay. So I know that the one, the black noir skin is going to push straight in. I'm expecting the second enemy to potentially push around the bus here and play this right side and try to pinch me a little bit instead of both following each other. So that's why I kind of play this angle. I hear the black noir skin to my left. Then I end up checking around the bus and catch this enemy rotating. And from this point, guys, how many enemies are alive? Two, one above, one on my level right around the corner. This is an immediate challenge here. I didn't take any damage. Anticipate around the corner. Hip fire, down, thirsted. Then we look up. That guy's flying in. And that's probably one of the cleanest 1v4s that I've had. Obviously, I took the one, uh, the, the little bit of damage from the Black Noir skin, but just reposition well. And now in this moment, what do we do? Again, this is where a lot of you struggle for two reasons. Number one, you just start looting. And number two, you don't have any information. So you end up just wandering. Where am I going to go? I'm just going to push hot areas of the map. What are three of the hottest areas on the map? 
four if you really want to go there. This area, there's generally teams. Market, there's generally teams. The buildings across from Market, there's generally teams. And Mall, there's generally teams. Okay, let's go ahead and push up here and see what we can find. And as we push up, we're going to get a bunch of shooting. Look at the shooting in Market. Look at the shooting across the street. So now I know I'm working the right direction and I can use that to my advantage. I'm going to go ahead and push up here as I push up. Just catch this guy. Sure enough, you push hot areas. You never know what's going to happen. You just run into an enemy. I'm going to go ahead and get that down in thirst. Then from there, what do we see? How many enemies are alive? Two, one down below in this building. But watch this enemy. Where is he moving to? This is a really easy decision right here. Oh, he's pushing right to me. Okay, well, I'll just wait for you. Let's go ahead and get that down in thirst. That was a pretty easy one since he peaked it. And by the way, uh, when it comes to dropping 30s, like, let's get the obvious thing out of the way. 30s in sweaty lobbies, very, very difficult. Almost impossible unless you are like a knight, a cat or something like that it's the lobbies that need that feel a little bit more normal even on the body end that we need to capitalize on a lot of you guys don't capitalize on the good lobbies and you may drop 15 or 17 and like i said biggest difference between 17 and 30 is just finding 30 more engagements the execution stays the same let's go ahead and push here we're going to grab a uav and we're going to push right back over now let's take let's think about this for a second let's not make this rocket science what do you, who do you think this enemy is? Do you think this enemy is the guy leaning back in on his stuff that I just killed? Yeah, probably. So let's go ahead and push right back up top. It's information that we have. We know there's a bunch of people across the street as well in market. But let's go ahead and take the easier kill. Watch my positioning right here. Guys, when we challenge, part of execution, right? Part of execution is aim, movement, positioning, and gameplay strategy. Gameplay strategy is kind of information, but when it comes to positioning, I shoot a little bit. I'm not just going to wait here because I'm completely out in the open. What do I do? I just slide to the head glitch, right? Slide to the head glitch makes it really difficult. I catch a quick glimpse of that enemy right there, so I'm just going to wait for him. Go ahead, peek it. We get the break. I'm not going to worry about the thirst just yet. I'm going to go ahead and push up. We get the down. We get that kill right there. We're going to go ahead, jump over top. Even if he has self-revive, he's not even going to come close to being able to get this off. And just like that, we're at 14 kills, guys. 14 kills. We're off to really good pacing. You know, we, I think we had seven or eight in the first. We go push over here now. We're going to pop UAV, and let's keep rocking and rolling. Now, bunch of people up top here. As I'm pushing over, I just make the decision, right? Very quick decision here. I hear, I see shooting across. We're going to pop a UAV. We're going to go ahead. We're going to push that direction. And then we get another piece of information. We get another piece of information. One flying in, two flying here. Now, I don't know if those guys are flying in. I don't know if they're zipping, but we're just going to go ahead and act on this, right? We're just going to go ahead. We're going to push across. We're going to work our way up to rooftop. We catch this on, enemy on the backside. Can't quite get the down right there. So we're just going to work our way back in. Reposition work our way through we're going to take jump spot here one of my favorite jump spots and i just don't quite hit it so now we're just going to keep working our way inside guys working our way inside that guy's on rooftop one straight ahead here once again you're going to see me use stims and this is all because i'm in the action all because I'm in the action, right? That's really why I'm able to get these kills is because I'm just clearing. I'm just putting myself in a good spot where there's multiple enemies. We're going to go ahead and work our way through here. And you're going to see kill number 16. This is the mobility of this HRM9 build. Yes, I'm on radar. But keep in mind that Jack BFP doesn't give exact location, exact level. So kind of a little bit easier to use. A little bit easier to get away with. Now, where are people? Well, there's a bunch of people across here, right? Remember all the teams that were across this way. This is where you have to remember information. Another big component of dropping high kill games is remembering information you know there's one right there i get the knock also notice that they are getting shot from a guy that is right here watch this see somebody shooting somebody shooting on the right side of the buildings here so that's who i'm gonna go push i'm gonna go work my way up here Let's see what we can find. This is another one of my favorite 1v3s. And by the way, Endgame is where we really clutch this dub. And we put up, a, I think we put up 13 kills during Endgame here, all based on just positioning and gameplay strategy. So, you know, and we clutch the dub. That's the most important thing. We're going to push down low. Watch how this happens. How many enemies are alive? Where are they moving to? Where are they in relation to you? Okay, so how many enemies are alive? Two. Where are they in relation to me? Above. Where are they moving to? Watch this one. Notice this guy right here. Notice he jumped. He jumped right here. He's off the building. This guy's still up top. This guy jumped down low. So, okay. Come on. Like, I'm just going to plate up. I know you're going to chase me. We're going to go ahead and get that kill right there. A little bit scary, but you know what? We're able to hit fire the HRM. One guy still up above. Now, in this moment, when I push up above, there's one of two places that he's going to be. 
Actually, let's not even go there. Let's just say he's going to be on this rooftop somewhere, okay? We don't 100% know where. So let's just clear it kind of one step at a time. As we peek the corner here, we catch a very quick glimpse of that guy. And now we go in and challenge. But if he's not here, you probably got to think that he's over by this big game bounty somewhere. And we can just go ahead and clear that building, right? So we're at 19 kills right here. I end up hearing another one down below. Watch how I pre-fire the stairwell here. Watch my centering, watch how I pre-fire this, and I'm able to just go ahead and keep this pressure on. Keep in mind, when you get pre-fired, it, it can be scary at times, right? When you start getting pre-fired around corners and stuff, you start to panic and hesitate a little bit to challenge that, which kind of holds that guy for half a second. Now, in this moment, I know a bunch of people are over to my left side, don't have anything concrete, so what do we do? We just immediately go pop UAV here. Immediately pop UAV, and we're just going to push across back to this cluster of buildings, make a very quick decision, and look how many people are behind me. Bunch of people outside of the circle, but guys, really work on putting yourself in circle. Fight in circle as much as possible. Hold enemies out, but for the most part, guys, fighting in circle is going to be so much easier. Find the angle. Find the angle to challenge from. We're going to push straight through here. There's enemy number one. There's enemy number two. Not sure where enemy number three is. Shooting through walls. This is a wall bangable building, guys. Every single one of these triangle buildings here is wall bangable. And then we're going to trust our high alert. Let's go ahead and get up and over. We're in an okay spot here. 21 kills, still 42 seconds left until respawn is disabled. Everything changes once respawn disables. That's when we really focus on our positioning. But right here for now, still worried about an enemy up top here. Now I get a little bit of audio of a guy down below here as I'm starting to work across, and we're able to get that kill, which gives us the information, right? Now, what do you notice right here? I want you to look at this. I want you to look as he's zipping up. Do you see another enemy? You should. Just barely, right? Just barely he's up top here, okay? Watch him running across. You're gonna see him right by the umbrella, right by this umbrella here. Watch this. Here's why this is so important. See that? Just barely, because when I get the pings, notice that it, I don't get the pings from that guy. That is, They are not on the same team. I hear an enemy to my right side. Watch this right here. We're able to get this kill. This is a big kill because it gives me the information. Notice the guy over here to my left not on the same team. So I'm in between a bunch of teams here. Still one on my level. So we're going to go ahead and work down below here. Let's go ahead and work down below instead of pushing up top. Enemies across. Not going to panic about those guys. Right? Going to try to get that. Now we're going to work ahead. We're going to work up top. Now when do I panic a little bit? In this moment, I knew the guy might have been pushing across. They jumped in the water. And I have one above. We're a little bit pinched. But respawn is disabled at this point. Let's go ahead. Slow this game down a little bit. Let's play our positioning as much as possible. I've seen more and more end games actually finish kind of in this cluster of buildings. They do get a little bit dicey here. Trust your high alert. Play your cover. Give up the rooftop if you have to. That's that's the three things that I can tell you for this end game right here. One straight across. One straight across here. Don't chase. Think ahead. Don't chase. Think ahead. Don't chase. Think ahead. Don't chase. Think ahead. Think ahead. Where is he going to go? He's going to push down low. Well, sure enough, what does he do? He pushes right to me, right? Catch him off guard. I already have such a big advantage. We don't even worry about looting him. Let's go right back to the rooftop here. And I look, remember all the enemies that were over on this side of the map? Well, should be pretty free and easy holds here. Should be pretty easy to hold them up. So I'm going to go ahead and reload. Bunch of people shooting straight across from me. One guy to the left side. I want you to remember that guy. Do not forget this guy. Do not forget this guy. Ingrain it in your brain that this guy's here. I'll tell you why in a second. I'll show you. We're just going to wait. Trying to get him to re-peak a little bit. Not going to re-peak. Going to go worry about the people that are rotating in behind me. Okay? Trust my high alert. I'm going to trust my high alert in this situation. One down below right there. Down, thirsted. There's kill number 25, by the way. Still so many people left. So many people left. We just got to play our positioning. High alerted to the left side. Okay? We're just going to push out. We're going to play our cover right here. Don't go down here. I don't have self-revive. No down situation. Don't over-challenge that. As soon as I miss these first shots, as soon as I miss those shots right there and I start getting shot, guys, we're going to drop down low. Don't challenge that. Just push across here. We're going to slide, find a different angle. Worried about that guy again, right? Worried about that guy. Now, in this moment, I'm going to do two things after I check it again. I'm going to try to break the line of sight, and I'm going to trust my high alert because I know that there's a bunch of kills backside this way that I can get if I can protect myself from the guy behind me. Which we're going to get, by the way. Downed. Right there. Good live ping. Allows me to easily get that. 
Can't quite get the full though. One right there. Just keep the pressure on. There's the down. Now he's going to end up having self-revive. I can't quite get that full kill yet, but still work. And you see how this guy can't see me? See how this guy can't really see me right here? I'm in a great spot to, to kind of cover myself from that, from that enemy that's back behind. Trusting high alert. One right there. Flare over to the left side. We're just going to, we've got to find a way to get this knock. There's the down. Still not going to worry about that thirst just yet. Still worried about that enemy. One dropping in. We're going to go ahead and get that kill right there out of the sky. There's the wipe, to number 27, with 22 other enemies still alive. Now, we're just going to keep playing patient here. Just going to keep playing a little bit of positioning. Bigger issue in this moment, not going to over-challenge that. Bigger issue in this moment is I only have 41 bullets left in my AR, which means it's tough to play position. I can't play positioning if I don't have any bullets in my LMG here, in my pull yacht. Let me go ahead and push this forward past the mortar strike. I just kind of wait this thing out. So, what do we do from here? We've just got to keep playing positioning, okay? Just keep playing positioning for now. Try to get a knock. Try to get something that allows us, maybe even loot up a little bit. I'm going to loot up here just for a little bit here to be able to see if I can get some AR ammo because I know that I need it. But I also know that I need to get back to the rooftop. Let's go ahead and grab stims from here. Just remember, guys, stims in every single building. They're super valuable to use. We're going to grab durable. And why do I grab this thermite? Because at the end of the day, I don't have a throwing knife and it's not going to hurt, right? Having a thermite is better than having nothing. And I can actually use a thermite the same way I use a throwing knife. So now we go back to the rooftop here. I'm not going to give up my high ground. Let's stay in circle with cover, then power position for now. For now, let's stay in circle with cover, then power position. Worried about straight across. Worried about straight across. Sure enough, there's that enemy again. Peeking again. Still not totally concerned about him, though, because I have plenty of cover. Keep working. Yep, keep working here. And what do we act on? What do we act on? After we get this kill, hi, we mounted there. Just to make sure we got it. Bunch of shooting down below. There's one right there. There's one right there. And by the way, I get the down. He has that perk that drops the smoke. So I'm actually going to use that to my advantage to go get AR ammo. Because I don't have smoke. So I'm going to use it to get AR ammo. And as I push across, we are in a very bad spot here. But we're not. We're not. I got three enemies on the screen right here. Just ignore them. Where do I want to be? I want to be in circle with cover then power position. I want to be on this rooftop. Don't even shoot at them. They're not going to shoot at you. Even if they shoot at you, you can get around the wall here, right? You broke the, If they shoot at you, I just broke the line of sight, and now they have nothing because I can get into this building. Clear straight through. I'm going to go ahead and work up top, and we get a great circle pull here. Great circle pull because of how many people we're going to be able to hold out of circle. We got the pull that we needed. I hear one up above me, just a little bit of footsteps on the gravel and a flare to my left side. So I'm going to actually thermite over there just in case these guys are on the same team. Once again, 29 kills here. We're going to go ahead and get kill number 30. We're going to down this guy, but he actually doesn't get thirsted out of the sky. I have no idea how. I guess he went in the water. And finally, we have enough ammo, right? Finally, we have enough ammo in the, the Polum Yacht. Can't quite get that one. There's kill number 30, by the way, because of that, that guy that I downed out of the sky. So now we just got to clutch, right? Now we just got to clutch. Thinking ahead right here. One guy pushing up the stairs. Let's go ahead and win this gunfight. Downed. He shot back, but I just strafed a little bit better. And I want to explain this situation. Bunch of people rotating in. Did you see that guy? This guy is the most important one. Don't forget about this guy. Watch this. We're going to go ahead as we jump up top. Remember this enemy right here. We've got one enemy right here and one enemy right here. So as I get the thirst, that's a wipe. Enemy flying in overhead. We're going to get that down right there. And I still need to worry about the guy that was behind the bush. Where's the guy that's behind the bush? He's got to push in at this point. There he is right there. We're going to go ahead. There's kill number 34. 1v1v1 1 1 1 situation. Not 100% sure where they are. So we're just going to keep playing high ground. See if we can get some audio. Maybe somebody rotating. There's the kill right there. Now we're in a 1v1 situation, not 100% sure where he is. Got to assume that he might be in the building, might be down low here. I get some audio down low. I hear just a little bit of footstep audio down low. So I know he's down low here, just not 100% sure until I hear the glass break. Once I hear the glass break, we're going to turn the corner here. There's no glass right here, right? There's no glass in this building right here. So we're going to go ahead, assume that he's in this building right here in this corner. Go ahead and challenge there, a little bit of strafing. Easy kill right there for the 36 kill dub. Guys, I hope you found today's video helpful when it comes to pacing. Pop UAVs, portable radars, trust your high alert, get high ground, rotate to hot areas, use your weapon pings on the minimap, use your minimap uh, pings after a kill. Piece all of that information. Don't loot too much. Keep pushing. I hope you found today's video helpful. As I always say, let's get better today and I will see you tomorrow.